Hello, hello, friends of Mana. Welcome to our Instagram Live. I'm very excited to see you joining us as always, whether you're watching live with us today or you're watching the recording. Thank you so much for your continuous support. We really, really love having you watch our videos and hopefully we are providing very valuable content to each of you. Today we'll be going through a year-end goal setting session that helps you reflect on the year and start a new one with a clearer plan for success. This is the perfect time. We are at the end of 2021. I can't believe the year is already over. It's crazy. I don't know about you, but it went by so fast. But you know, it's the holiday season. It can be a very busy time, busy time for all of us. But I'm sure you can find maybe a couple of hours to sit down and really reflect on what happened, what didn't, and come up with a great plan for next year, 2022. We also created a poll about it on Twitter and on LinkedIn. So let us know your thoughts about goal setting by casting your vote at Mana Hours on Twitter and at mana.ai on LinkedIn. And don't forget to follow us there to stay updated. Plus, this is something that I wanted to share here. Since we're talking about following us, we are almost at 100 followers here on Instagram. Yay! This is so exciting for us. So let us connect and help us reach this milestone. This is so important for us. Now, before we start, as always, let us know where you're watching from. And while we wait for more people to join us, I will introduce myself. My name is Sabrina Cadini. I'm a holistic life coach helping busy professionals live and work better thanks to customized lifestyle interventions. And I'm also the director of coaching here at MANA, helping our users take control of the most valuable resource that we have in the world, which is time. <laughs> Are you a MANA user yet? If not, you should try it. Our MANA, our time tracking app, uses machine learning technology to predict future behavior and integrations with a variety of applications to drive peak performance in people, teams, and companies. MANA allows you to automatically track how you spend all of your time and it helps you spend it better, create goals, see their progress, and stay motivated along the way together with one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's not all. The app also encourages self-awareness with reflection and journaling so that you can learn how to maximize your performance and avoid burnout. We'll take a look at these features today since we're talking about goal setting. And if you'd like to check it out, you can just go to mana.ai, download the app, then schedule a session with our coaches to know more and start taking advantage of all the wonderful tools we have to spend your time on what matters most, especially during the holiday season. Don't you guys agree? All right, so let's dive right into our topic for today. So let's be honest, we've been through another year of challenges, right? And we're still dealing with so many uncertainties and lack of control in many areas of our lives and we may feel stuck or uh, overwhelmed without making any progress in life. But that doesn't mean that we have to stop planning for our future because we don't know what's going to happen, right? Having a solid goal plan for 2022, there are a lot of twos in the year, <laughs> next year, is important to give us more clarity and purpose to prevent doubts or fear of change and to grow in our life and in our career. So you get to decide where it goes from here. You get to choose who you want to be and the life you want to create for yourself and not only for yourself, also for those around you, your loved ones. And it all starts with your decision to take responsibility and control of your life and set your sights on the goals that you create for yourself. And you know, I'm sure you're familiar with this. I mean, many of us set goals at the end of the year just because and or even those new year's resolutions right i'm sure you're very familiar with those we all created those we all thought about those at the end of the year but they don't usually work for many reasons such as they're not planned out and written down right they come maybe out of frustration or maybe something didn't work this year and so we're thinking okay next year it will be different i will do this 
right? So it's something that comes out of, you know, the blue, but with no specific uh, planning. Uh, or maybe there's no system in place to track those goals and measure the progress. So you can't really know where you're going throughout the year, right? So maybe you give up, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, or maybe there's a lack of clarity or a support or accountability. If you work with a coach, I'm sure you know exactly where you're going because the coach is helping you stay on track with your vision, with your passion. But if you don't have guidance, uh, you're very likely to give up because you don't really know what direction you might take. And also another reason why goals might not work is that there's no specific time frame. When are you going to start working on them? January 1st or later? For how long? How long should that goal take you, right, to, to achieve? So again, without having a direction and without knowing where you want to go, it's pretty impossible to stay on track with your goals. So today I will show you how to plan for your future starting today. And so we'll go through a year end reflection and goal setting session so that you have all the elements you need to achieve your goals. And what we're going to do is start with the first step for your year end goal session. And if you have time now while you're watching this podcast, you can just follow along while I share questions and tips to help you with the process. But it would be best if you could dedicate some time, let's say a couple of hours, maybe over the weekend, to really dig deeper and ask yourself the right questions to create your most meaningful goals. So feel free to play back this broadcast whenever you can carve out some time for this exercise. Again, the broadcast will probably last 10-15 minutes, but I would like you to really reflect and think and have time to sit down and write down what happened and what you want to do next year. So reflection is the first step. And this is a very powerful and valuable process where you take time to go over everything that happened or didn't the past year uh, or this year that is coming to an end. And you should go through different areas of your life and career and really reflect on what happened and how you can improve because that sets the foundation for your goals for next year. So very simply, make a list of your highlights. It could be positive or new experiences, meaningful relationships, accomplishments, things that you are proud of in life and your career. And also identify challenges from the previous year. And writing each challenge out provides clarity and may result in overlooked solutions. So take the time to contemplate any obstacles you may have encountered, why those things didn't go as planned or didn't materialize. So I want you to write down the good things and the bad things. What really stood out and what didn't happen. And some questions to help you with this reflection uh, exercise could be, what is one of my significant accomplishments or moments or experiences? What am I most proud of? What uh, didn't work or didn't happen and why? What should I leave behind or keep moving forward? Also ask yourself, how was my energy level? And did I take care of myself enough? Because this might impact your life and work next year. So you know when you're most active, when you have the most energy, so you can focus on deeper work during those hours. So try to analyze that. Try to see how your machine, your body and brain are going to help you achieve your goals better and faster in some cases. And if you have more time, uh, as I mentioned, try to analyze specific areas. And this can include your health and wellness, your relationships with your significant other, your family, your friends, your community, or your team at work, your career, uh, all the fun things you have done, your spiritual side, your finances, and your personal growth. So the more specific you are with those reflections and thoughts, the better it will be to craft your goals for the next year. And you know, many people feel, I can say, intimidated 
by this reflection exercise, but you can just keep it very simple, especially if it's the first time uh, for you. So you can just ask yourself what was the biggest highlight this year? Uh, and, you know, once you ask yourself that question, some other thoughts may come to the surface. So what was the biggest highlight? Did you start a new job? Why did you start a new job? Maybe because the other job, the older job was not a good fit for you. Why wasn't it a good fit? Well, maybe, maybe because you couldn't dedicate enough time to your growing family. So see, now you're expanding to other areas and you're touching on your family and you may discover more about your values, about what's most important in your life, right? So maybe, you know, you found a different job because that allowed you to keep a good work-life balance or as I say, a good life-work balance, right? So maybe you can expand on those types of goals because that's what you're really looking forward to for the next year. And being able to reflect allows you to gather useful information about the past and give you suggestions to create goals that are truly aligned with your values, your vision, and your passions. Of course, I'm biased here, but MANA is an excellent tool to help you reflect because it shows you data that you collect from tracking your time and it can help you change or improve where needed. And I will show you how you can do that in the app in a few minutes. Now that you collected a lot of valuable feedback from your experiences in 2021, it's now time to start working on your goals for 2022 and decide which direction you want to take next year. And these goals can be big, they can be small goals that you can achieve every month or even every week. They don't have to be for the entire year. They don't have to last 12 months. One of my clients just set a goal in a goal setting session a couple of days ago, two weeks, because it's a very small goal, but she wants to include it in her list of goals for 2022. And I thought it was brilliant because she didn't want to leave anything, you know, <laughs> uh, to, to chance. She wanted to plan everything. And she said, well, I still have this little goal and it will just take me two weeks. Where can I put it in? So we decided to, to allow, you know, some time for that goal towards the end of the year, around September, when the, her big goal is done. And so she can dedicate more time to those little ones. And goals can also be anything. You may want to earn a lot of more money and buy a big house, but they can also be about being able to help others, being able to give back, being an inspiration or a role model to others, having more time for yourself or for your family and more. So there's no right or wrong here. Just do what feels good to you. Uh, I would also like to share some tips to help you create amazing goals. So tip number one would be following the SMART rule. Some of you might use the SMART rule for work, and this is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. And this can be very helpful to map out your 2022. So, you're no, so you know that you're not setting goals that are too overwhelming or they're not realistic for you. Tip number two would be focusing on a positive mindset. And this is something that I always remind my clients. So write down something like, I want to stop smoking instead of I need to stop smoking. The need is more like a forced change of direction and it might be more difficult to achieve. In other words, your brain will be more resistant to accept that change and it will interfere with your best intentions, <laughs> believe me, it will be very difficult to do that. Tip number three will, would be defining your why. So write down why these goals are important. Go beyond the initial desire and the initial thought. You want to stop smoking, but why? What will be the benefits of achieving that goal? What will you gain? Will it be better health? Will it be saving some money because you don't have to buy cigarettes any longer? Your why will be a huge motivator. Tip number four would be be specific with the time frame. And I mentioned that at the beginning, this is one of the reasons why goals fail because you don't really know how long they should take. You don't really know how long you should work on them. So do you want to start on January 1st or maybe later in the year? 
having a specific time frame allows you to be more strategic and more clear about the execution. And you can also set two, three, or four goals with different time frames so that you know you will have enough time and enough energy to achieve them. What I usually do is have one big yearly goal that will take me all 12 months. So this is my biggest uh, effort. And then I break it down into weekly actionable steps. Then I create a six month goal starting in March or April or May. And then I create smaller ones that will take me about a month or a few months. So I could start one in, let's say in September, for instance. Right, like pretty much like you know what we did um, with my client that I mentioned earlier. That way, you're not too overwhelmed with all of your goals, keeping you busy every single day of the year. Because for sure, some of them will need to be left aside. You will not have time for everything. I mean, life is busy already, and you don't have time to work on all of your goals every single day. Tip number five, have an action plan. And this is, you know, straightforward. <laughs> this is, you know, of course, duh, right? So writing down a goal will only take you so far. What you need is a clear plan to go from point A, where you are now, to point B, which is your final destination. Make sure you list all of the strategies you will use to work on the goal. You don't want to focus exclusively on the outcome. You want to plan out the entire process which is what will allow you to achieve the goal at the end. Some examples, break down, break each goal down in smaller actionable steps so that they won't be too overwhelming. Um, add tasks for each goal to your daily or weekly schedule. Set reminders on your computer or mobile devices. Um, best of all, I would say pick an accountability partner so they can hold you accountable and push you a little bit and keep you, you know, on track with everything. Uh, so remember, goal setting is about consistency uh, and it's not a sprint. And when you make progress, even if it's slow, you're more motivated to continue. You keep the momentum going and that reduces your chance of failure. Hello, Michael, how are you? Happy holidays, so nice to see you. So let's do a quick recap of the tips that I share with you today, and then I will have a final one. So tip number one would be follow the SMART rule, which is something that you probably are using already in your job at, at work. Number two, focus on a positive mindset. Tip number three, define your why, because this will be a huge motivator for you. Tip number four, be specific with the time frame. And tip number five, have an action plan. And tip number six, reward yourself. Most of us don't do it because again, we're so focused on the outcome that we forget about the fun process. We forget about enjoying the process, enjoying the effort that we are putting in to achieve this goal. So set a reward for when you achieve milestones and do it during the journey. And you don't have to wait until you achieve the entire goal, the big milestone. You can set little ones along the way. This will show you the progress. It will keep you motivated towards the destination and it will keep the momentum going. And your milestones can be set depending on your goals and how you need help in staying motivated. Do you need to measure and see your progress every week? Perfect. So set milestones every week, maybe every Sunday. Or are you so focused and clear about your direction that you can work towards your goal for a month without seeing where you're going? Even better. Good job. Congrats. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. So maybe you can do like, you know, a little checkpoint every month. And if you achieved what you wanted to do every month, have a little reward for that. It will work wonders. Last one, I will give you like a bonus tip. Review your goals periodically. Don't forget to revisit your goals and reflect on each of them periodically to measure the progress, the timeline and success. And this goes, goes along with the reward process, right? You want to make sure that they're still aligned with your values, with your vision and your passion. And you know, guys, since things may change during the year, you can make changes to your goals as well. You can tweak them here and there, or maybe create new goals altogether, and that will be fine. 
Goals are not set in stone, they can change with you. But it's important that they're still relevant, otherwise there's no point to work on them, right? I'm sure you agree with me. So we at MANA strongly believe in goal setting and Michael is one of our amazing users. He's been using MANA for so long. We're so happy to have him in our uh, MANA family. And our app can be very helpful to reflect, create goals, track their progress and achieve them thanks to tracking, reflection and journaling. Not only that, working with our MANA coaches can help you keep track of your goals hold you accountable and achieve them, which is the most important part, <laughs> right? So let me show you how these tools can help you plan for success. I'll switch the camera and I will show you how the app works. Okay, so I am showing you the goal screen. This is my data. I have currently two goals until the end of the year. And this shows me the progress. So as you can see, I am doing very bad with my book writing goal. The wheel around the time frame that I set for each week is completely red because this week I didn't work on this goal at all. So I didn't set any time, unfortunately, to write it down. So I'm a little behind with that and I hit that when it happens. Uh, the second one, I already did something uh, two days ago and I didn't track time yesterday, so I'm a little behind with that, but I know that I am on track with this uh, goal of mine. And the way you set a goal in MANA is very easy. So you can just click on Mari, our spirit of time, and create. click on new goal. And here you have the ability to select an activity. So I can just say, um, let's say, well, I already did my goal setting session, but I can just um, write down goal setting. And this was my mindset activity. So if you want to set some time for this goal setting session, you just create the, uh, the goal and then you decide how long you want to invest for that activity. So it could be less than exactly or more than a certain amount of hours every week, every day, every year. So you can remind yourself to have this goal setting session once a year. You can play, you can set a start and an end time. And also these two areas are wonderful because they really encourage you to make a promise to yourself. So the first question is, why is this important to you? So you write down some notes about why this goal is a priority to you and you want to create a goal in the app. And the second one asks you, how are you going to achieve this? So here is where you can list all the strategies and the steps to achieve the goal. But then you have also the opportunity to uh, apply like a rating uh, to the goal. Is it a five star a goal or maybe less important? So totally up to you. And once you have a goal uh, created, you can see it in the goal screen. Another thing that I love about the app is that when you go to your reflection page, this is where the magic happens because you can see how many hours, minutes of your time are spent on each activity. Look at that. I have more than a year of data in MANA and I can take a look at the data by week, by quarter, by month, by year even, and see where my hours went. And when I want to reflect on something, I can just take a look at this and see where I can make changes and I can improve. Not only that, but you can see probably here, let me put it closer. You can see these uh, colored squares. Those are my reflection. And if I want to reflect on this zero book writing, I can just click on the number and here I can leave a little thought or a few sentences reflecting on why I didn't spend the time to write my book last week, which was pretty disappointing, right? And here you can see there's a history. So I left more journal entries about this goal and I can see the trends, I can see what happens and I can see the changes. I can maybe uh, improve the way I want to spend time for this book writing, maybe change the frequency or maybe have uh, less time because I can see I'm very busy and I will not be able to achieve my goal. So if I decide to maybe have um, less time per week, Maybe I'm more motivated because then I can see instead of three hours a week, I only do one and I'm able to write down something in that hour, right? I, I, I hope it makes sense to you guys. 
Sometimes we set goals that are too unrealistic and we think that we can make it happen, but then, you know, life happens and you get behind and you're less motivated and you give up. So sometimes it's best to set a goal that is less intense and you're like, well, maybe I can work two hours a week on that goal. Start setting one hour a week and see if that can fit your busy schedule. If it does, then you can increase it. Uh, last year, I didn't have any problem. This year, it was very busy because I had more clients, more going on. <laughs> and so I was a little too hard on myself and probably I need to um, lower the amount of hours so that I can fit that goal in my busy schedule. So let me know if you have any questions uh, for me regarding the topic today, our year-end goal session or about our app, MANA, I'm here to help. Uh, I'll wait for a few seconds while you type your questions in the comment box. And in the meantime, I'll remind you about uh, the uh, download. Uh, you can go to mana.ai, download our app, and schedule a session with me or other coaches here at MANA to know more about the app tips and strategies on how you can spend your time better and how you can create and achieve fantastic goals, especially this time of the year, the end of 2021, and we are ready to start a new year. I'm very excited about it. I don't know about you, but I'm always looking forward to a new year, new beginnings, new opportunities, right? I'm all, I always have this positive outlook about new year. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in January with another IG Live that I'm sure you will love. So we'll follow up on this goal setting session and we'll talk about ways to maintain momentum with your goals in 2022. So don't give up too soon. I will help you stay on track with that. Have a great rest of your day. Happy holidays and I will see you soon. Bye.